this was look probably surprising but not shocking not the most predicted outcome but definitely predictable I mean anybody mm. who was looking at the polling and was analysing it it was always going to be possible that all of the swing states would break one way um, yesterday even James Carville you know the Democratic consultant was saying it's more likely that swing states all break one way than yeah. they do than they do get mixed so I mean it it, it, it shouldn't it wasn't shocking um, obviously ultimately it, it, it is then surprising when you, you all the talk of a tight election and then it, it's over quite early and it was over quite early, in spite of uh, the predicted difficulties with polling, mail-in votes, how they'd be counted. No hanging chads, but pretty much everything else was being touted as a possible difficulty. And there were none. Ultimately, no difficulties knew quite early once you saw North Carolina, once you saw Georgia, once you saw the initial from the, from the Rust Belt. It was quite obvious what, what was going to happen. I mean, I think you could almost argue as well that um, it was decided much more before ele- election night. I mean, if you bring it right back now with, the, with, with hindsight that we have, if we analyse it, Joe Biden made two major mistakes over the last number of years. Number one was when he was talking about his economic agenda. He missed the inflation issue and was labelling it Biden Bidenomics for quite some time. A logical approach trying to explain mm. pe- to people with data what it has to be an emotional argument, an emotionally resonant argument on the economy is what Donald Trump ultimately had. And also, if we go back to the start of the year in February, when the special prosecutor announced that they weren't going to go ahead with the case against Joe Biden because he would come across as a sympathetic, forgetful old man to the jury. He was done at that stage. There was no coming back from that. Polling showed people had worries about his age. He should have at that stage read the political tea leaves and said, OK, we're going to need another candidate if we really care about beating Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump is a phenomenally effective OK, but the, the misstep then by the Democratic Party, um, did they take into account whether it was misogyny or whether just um, kind of societally America's not read, ready for a female chief executive in Kamala Harris. I mean, should they have gone to the convention and had an open battle for the nomination? Ultimately, when it came down to it, they just didn't have the time, the infrastructure, the ideas to make that happen. It it wasn't politically realistic at that stage to move past your vice president to go for a convention. And also, no other Democrat wanted it. No other Democrat forced it. So there are times when we look at the the decision that was made and say, how could you make that decision without looking at the wider context that the decision existed in? If they'd had more time and opened it up, well, then they would have been able to have those those discussions. Um, But look, they going into the campaign itself you can analyse the the campaign itself as well Um, the Harris campaign made the decision to focus on increasing the vote with women to get it higher than Hillary Clinton got to get it higher than the 54% to get it to the 55 to the 56% all of their messaging around abortion all of their messaging around Trump being dangerous was aimed at that it ultimately failed there was a logic to it but it failed ultimately because the exit polls show she got about the same amount of the female vote as Hillary Clinton There's uh, there's one kind of theory knocking around that young men in this part of the world as well as in the United States but feel a bit disenfranchised that the world is moving in women's direction and they wanted to kind of put a stop to it. Yeah, and look, the gender divide um, in, in the polling, the gender divide in America is a real thing and because we take our cultural touch points from the US that is something that could possibly um, seep in here as well but the the, the changes there weren't just in, in young men you know that's not why the Trump won this election that there's lots of other different reasons for it and I think when you look at the issues when it comes down to the the economic message that Trump had I don't believe there was a counter that Harris could have had to that economic issues for them are inflation there was no credible emotionally compelling argument within 90 days that she could bring forward because once inflation goes up it doesn't come down and talking about price gouging didn't work while Trump had a very simple emotionally resonant message it was grand when I was there I'm a businessman I'll fix it there's an emotional impact to that so they had to try something else they tried abortion and fear around Trump. It didn't work. There's only so many times, I suppose, as as political analysts on CNN, they, they can say America are very unhappy with the economy. They're very unhappy with the level of, of, of inflation and they're very unhappy with the level of immigration. So, I mean, it was always a strong hand for the Republican candidate. The only thing that was making it close um, was the, the idea that people had issues with Trump's character and then the abortion issue. But when it came down to it, the fears around those just didn't ultimately resonate. And something really interesting happened Um, in American um, politics over the last 18 months, Pat, where if you ask people to define what makes a good economy, up until about 18 months ago, 78% of people said jobs. 
So the amount of jobs is the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate got fixed and that switched to 70% said it's the price of groceries. So they changed how they defined what a good economy was. And I think the Democrats were probably a little slow initially in reacting to that change. And then when they did react to it, it felt too little, it felt too late um, and you weren't going to bridge that gap. Because people I say that Harris didn't focus on the economic issues or didn't have an economic message. She spent 300 million on television ads, talking about inflation, talking about price gouging. She tried to change the conversation to housing and I mean providing housing, but it wasn't going to cut through versus Trump's simpler message. So she had to switch the narrative and try to make the the campaign about something else because she wasn't going to win on those issues. How how do you feel then about uh, the administration that he's going to put together? I mean, it is um, going to be a collection of pretty crazy people. Yeah, and it's going to be an administration that has been very, very clear on what their priorities are. I mean, tariffs, RF, RF isolations. Kennedy. RF Kennedy Elon in charge of, of the health of, of the nation. Um, Elon Musk is going to be in charge of cutting trillions from the federal budget. The only thing that you, you have to, I suppose, give credit to is in his speech tonight, Donald Trump said, this is going to be a, a, a presidency of promises made, promises kept. He has been clear on what he's going to do. There is no idea here that anybody's been hoodwinked. There's no idea that people didn't show up and didn't know what they're going to get or that, you know, they weren't taking Trump seriously. The American people looked at the agenda they looked at the issues he was talking about and they've decided, yes, this is the approach we want to take. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, there is an element of this is what democracy is. You can have major issues with mm. what people are deciding. You can have major issues with what they've decided the solution is. But when it comes down to it, they did look at it. They've had eight years to make up their mind and they made up their mind in greater numbers. And the texture that had there, they are right. There's a, a tendency since the result to come in to say, oh, well, Harris was the wrong candidate. It was awful all the way along. That does discount the fact that Donald Trump is an incredibly effective political yeah. performer. No, I, I mean, the concerns you have, though, is that the people who are anti-vax, for example, and the creation of vaccines was the single biggest uh, health benefit ever invented by science and second to that would be antibiotics. Mm. But uh, I mean the lives that have been saved by vaccination and now you're going to have someone perhaps like RF Kennedy around the cabinet if not in fact the health secretary coming out with this stuff which is going to ultimately kill people. And ultimately impact us uh, us here um, and, and across the world. Um, again I suppose on that a couple of points um, w- worth making on that. Um, number one the democratic morale is now on the floor their energy level is on the floor. You wonder how much resistance they have left in them, you know, for a period of time. And I suppose the second thing, and it's it's wider than this, is they do now need to go back and analyse and say, right, what is our coalition? The Obama coalition that worked has fallen apart. It doesn't work anymore. The Biden coalition was an anti-Trump coalition. The Democrats need to look at the demographics and say, hang on, who are our 51% of voters going to be? And until they work that out, they shouldn't be talking about who their next candidate's going to be, who the leaders are going to be, because they won't know who's right to speak to them. <laughs> they need to know who their audience is. I don't think they know that anymore. They tried this time to have it as college-educated women and women in general. It didn't work. It didn't work.